Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Teens TV Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Bising-bisi ka na, na Anong ginagawa mo, Nan? Ito, nire-replyan ko yung teacher ko. Tinatanong kasi niya yung vaccination status ko. Eh ano bang vaccination status mo? Fully vaccinated ka na ba? Oo naman. Mayroon na nga akong booster eh. Buti naman. Importante talaga ang vaccine ngayon. Speaking of vaccine, naalala ko, may assignment pala kami sa science. Tungkol saan yung assignment ninyo, Dino? Tungkol sa boils, lo. Ang alam ko, ito yung tungkol sa volume at pressure ng gas? Hindi ko sigurado eh. Basta ang alam ko, may kinalaman ito sa mga syringe na ginagamit sa vaccination. Para mas matutuhan pa natin kung ano ang boils, lo, panoorin natin ang episode na ito ni Ma'am Rona. Tara! Let's, Let's watch and learn! learn! Life as we know it will cease to exist in the absence of gases. Gas, as defined by science, is one of the four fundamental states of matter and may be made up of individual atoms forming elements and our molecules creating compounds. A gas mixture, such as air, contains a variety of pure gases, such as oxygen gas and carbon dioxide, which are involved in our breathing process. Hi there, Fernandino Teens. I am Ma'am Rona J. Buiko, and I will be your teacher lecturer for this episode. I am looking forward to a meaningful learning experience with you as we unfold yet another series of exciting science concepts. The title of today's edition of Fernandino Teens TV is Boyle's Law, Compression and Expansion of Gas. COVID-19 has brought so much changes in our society. Changes that cause sudden contrast to the usual way of living for the most of us. As things slowly return to normal, 
we must not forget the experiences and life lessons this pandemic has taught us. Borrowing the famous line from Robert Boyle, God would not have made the universe as it is unless He intended us to understand it. Following Boyle's logic, we should have understood by now the consequences of our actions that may eventually lead to undesirable outcomes. Viruses such as the one causing COVID-19 disease are extremely minuscule, making it even more difficult to avoid getting infected. However, under observation using special tests and laboratory instruments, scientists began to develop vaccine offering protection against the disease. Similarly, gases are also invisible to the naked eye. However, obscurity is not directly equated to absence. In fact, we are literally under the sea of air known as atmosphere, which is comprised of various known gases. Before we go further, let us play a game entitled Picture Puzzle. The game goes like this. I will be asking questions, and every time you answer correctly, a puzzle piece will be removed, revealing a portion of a certain picture. To make it short, this game is actually a race to guess who is the person behind the puzzle pieces. You will be given five seconds to answer either by typing in the comment sections or writing in your notebook. Another five seconds will be given for identifying the picture. Are you ready, Fernandino teams? Great! Let us start! Number one, which of the following can occupy the shape of the container they are placed in? A. Air B. Black of wood C. Galvanized metal sheets D. Water Very good, Fernandino teens. The correct answer is A and D. Both air and water have property of occupying the shape of their container. Since your answer is correct, let us remove the first puzzle piece. Can you guess the person in the picture already? I assume it's quite difficult, right? Then, let us continue on the next question. Number two. Which of the following phenomena does not involve application of gas pressure? A. Astronaut walking on moon surface B. Breathing process C. Hot air balloon that starts to rise D. Vulcanizing a flat tire Good job! The correct answer is A. Astronaut walking on the lunar surface does not experience gas pressure. This is because the moon is considered to be free of atmosphere to begin with. Answering the second question correctly earns you with another clue. Can you guess the person in the picture now? Perhaps still quite difficult, right? Then, let us continue. Number three, which among the following activities can improve our breathing pattern? A. Aerobic exercise B. Smoking C. Using inhalers D. All are possible answers Excellent! The correct answer is A. According to medical news today, Regular exercise help improve a lung's capacity to take in oxygen. Another puzzle piece will now be removed since you were able to answer the question correctly. Can you make another guess now? Nice try, Fernandino teens. Let us proceed. Number four. March is considered to be the fire prevention month. 
Which of the following fire hazards may involve volume and pressure of gas? A. Electrical wires B. Firecrackers C. LPG tanks D. All are possible answers Correct, Fernandino Tins. The answer is letter C. LPG tanks may leak and cause fire. At the same time, it may blow up when exposed to flame due to the rise of internal temperature and pressure. Finally, the last puzzle piece will now be removed. You will be given 5 seconds for the last time to identify this person. 5 seconds starts now. You are really amazing, Fernandino Tins. The person in the picture is none other than Robert Boyle. Robert Boyle was an Anglo-Irish natural philosopher, chemist, physicist, and inventor. Boyle is largely regarded today as the first modern chemist and therefore one of the founders of modern chemistry and experimental scientific method. Lastly, he is also best recognized for his law of gases known as Boyle's Law. After answering those questions and learning about Robert Boyle, I am pretty sure that you became curious and it opened even more queries regarding our topic. Before we start going further into our subject matter, here are the objectives of today's lesson. Specific objectives. At the end of the lesson, you would be able to explain the relationship existing between pressure and volume of gas, perform an experiment involving pressure and volume of gas, calculate pressure and volume of gas using a given formula. During the 16th century, scientists were baffled with the apparent weightlessness and motility displayed by gases compared to liquids and solids. As a matter of fact, gases remained a mystery until the end of 17th century when comprehensive investigation regarded gases as one of the fundamental states of matter. Sciencing.com have enumerated five properties of gases. These are low density, indefinite shape or volume, compressibility and expandability, diffusivity, and pressure. These five properties of gases, as well as their relation with each other, will be mentioned repeatedly during the entire course of this episode. Let us have a short break and when we return, we will perform a simple experiment that will show the relationship between volume and pressure of gas. Do not change the channel and Ferdinandino Teens TV Season 2 will return in a short while. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ang ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan.
Prenendino Teens TV. Welcome back to Fernandina Teens TV Season 2. As mentioned earlier, gases display a number of properties. However, this learning episode will focus on the relationship that exists between pressure and volume. At the same time, factors such as temperature of gas will always be considered negligible during our discussion. To make the connection between pressure and volume more defined, let us consider these examples. What makes this picture similar with one another? Correct! All these images show how force is being exerted towards a certain area or surface. How about these pictures? What similarity can you observe? Amazing, Fernandino Tins! The images are projecting a relatively empty space enclosed within a container. However, in reality, these vessels are not actually void of contents. What is probably inside these containers? You answer it right, Fernandino Tins! Gas is possibly present within the containers. In simple terms, pressure is the force acting on a given area while volume pertains to the three-dimensional space that is usually occupied by fluids. This table shows some examples of units and symbols used to describe pressure and volume. Let us identify the relationship between pressure and volume by performing this simple experiment entitled Mars Mallow Under Pressure. The following questions will serve as guide as you go through the experiment. Number one, how can you describe the size of the marshmallow when the plunger is being pushed and pulled? Number two, covering the tip of the syringe, how can you describe the size of the marshmallow when the plunger is being pushed and pulled? Number three, how can you explain the relationship between the size of the marshmallow and that of the movement of the syringe or plunger? Were you able to take note of the guide questions, Fernandino Tins? Great! Let us now watch this. Hi there, Fernandino Tins. Today, we will perform a simple experiment regarding two quantities affecting behavior of gases. The title of our experiment is Marshmallow Under Pressure. For this experiment, we will be needing the following materials. 50 ml syringe, rubber suction from a medicine wrapper, a piece of marshmallow, ball pen, and paper. To start, make sure to remove the needle from the syringe and pull out its plunger completely. Then, place the marshmallow vertically within the syringe. Using the graduation on the syringe, measure the size of the marshmallow and record it on your paper. For this case, the marshmallow measures 18 units. Afterwards, put back the plunger and push it without compressing the marshmallow inside. Cover the tip of the syringe using the rubber suction and start pulling the plunger back until it reaches the maximum graduation. Measuring the size of the marshmallow, we recorded 20 units. After recording the resulting size of the marshmallow, Release the cover on the tip of the syringe. Finally, cover the tip of the syringe once more and start pushing the plunger without compressing the marshmallow. The resulting size of the marshmallow now is 14 units. 
To give you a better look on how our experiment works, I will continuously push and pull the plunger while covering the tip of the syringe. Observe closely. I hope you enjoy this experiment. Until next time, If you were able to consider the guide questions earlier, answering these questions will be quite easy. Let us start. Number 1. What is the initial size of the marshmallow inside the syringe? Correct! The initial size of the marshmallow is 18 units. Number 2. What is the size of the marshmallow when the plunger has been compressed. Amazing! There are no changes observed on the marshmallow. Number three. What is the size of the marshmallow when the plunger is pulled back while covering the tip of the syringe? Remarkable! The marshmallow expanded and measured 20 units as compared to its initial size. Number 4. What is the size of the marshmallow after pushing the plunger with the tip of the syringe closed? Nicely done, Fernandino Tins. The marshmallow shrunk and measured just 14 units. Number 5. What were the two variables experimented in our activity? Wonderful! The size of the marshmallow and the degree how the plunger was manipulated were the two variables in the experiment. Number 6. What does the size of the marshmallow and the movement of the plunger represent in the experiment? That is correct, Fernandino Tins. Volume is represented by marshmallow and pressure is represented by the plunger. Number 7. What relationship does these two variables have based on the experiment? Great! Volume represented by the marshmallow and pressure represented by the plunger are inversely proportional with one another. The experiment performed earlier is an example of how gas behaves depending on various conditions, particularly when volume of a gas varies depending on the pressure applied while neglecting the inherent temperature, the system is said to be following Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that, at constant temperature, the volume of a given gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. In other words, if volume increases, then pressure decreases, and vice versa. This statement can also be expressed mathematically through this equation. P1V1 is equal to P2V2, where P1 is equal to the initial pressure while V1 is equal to initial volume. Consequently, P2 and V2 refer to the final pressure and final volume respectively. To make it easier to understand, let us consider this example. When you pump air into a tire, the gas molecules inside the tire get compressed and packed close together. This increases the pressure of the gas and it starts to push against the wall of the tire, making it to inflate. Applying the equation, P1 and V1 is the pressure and volume of the tire right before pumping it with air, while P2 and V2 is the final condition of the tire after inflating it. This time, let us try to answer this sample problem by using the equation presented earlier. Make sure to follow the steps closely because later, I will ask you to solve worded problems on your own. Are you ready? Let us start. A gas occupies 12.5 liters 
at a pressure of 30.0 mm of mercury. What is the volume when the pressure is increased to 50.0 mm of mercury? Following the GUPSA format, solving the problem is as follows. Identifying the given. The initial volume or V1 is 12.5 liters and the initial pressure or P1 is equal to 30.0 mm of mercury. Lastly, final pressure or P2 is stated as 50.0 mm of mercury. The unknown of the problem is the final volume or V2. Determining the unknown of a specific problem is essential because it will lead us at arriving with the applicable or working formula. Next, the formula or equation will be derived as follows. First, write the original formula. Since we are solving for the V2 or the final volume, we have to divide both sides of the equation with P2. Doing so, we will end up canceling P2 on the right side. Because of this, V2 will now be left on the side of the equation and our final formula will then be V2 is equal to P1V1 over P2. This derivation is necessary since the original formula is not applicable on what the problem asked. Applying the derived formula, the solution will be like this. Substitute the variables such as P1, V1, and P2 with the identified given values from the problem. The equation will now be read as V2 is equal to 30.0 mm of mercury multiplied to 12.5 liters all over 50.0 mm of mercury. This time, we are ready to compute for the final answer. Multiplying 30.0 mm of mercury and 12.5 liters will give us a product equal to 375 mm of mercury liters. This value will then be divided by 50.0 mm of mercury and will give us the final answer which is 7.5 liters. Reminder, do not forget to cancel out similar units in the equation. Do you see any similar units in the equation, Fernandino Tins? Amazing! We have to cancel out millimeter of mercury and living liters as the final unit. Were you able to follow the steps in solving a Boyle's Law problem, Fernandino Tins? It's quite simple, right? Gases are invisible but mostly involved in everything we do. Take a deep breath and appreciate life filled with fresh air. For the meantime, let us have a short break and later, I will give you a few problems to solve applying the principle of Boyle's Law. So do not change the channel and Fernandino Teens TV Season 2 will be right back. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon ng bulan na ini, pag masusyantaya ang National Heritage Month na ating temang Victory and Humanity Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng Ciudad at pinang launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ang Heritage Passport at pinang metong karang proyekto ng kaya katamong Ciudad ang pamana muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagay lang ang dingega na ganang heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kaya katamong heritage district. Makakayado din kaya ni, ding importansya da ding mapay na tradisyon kaya ni siyudad, kalupa yun ang pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May ahos siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, Anong nuka rin puntalan mula din at yung passport at saka ka mag-selfie? Kay ba't kanta palito making tourism office at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ay ganagan ang apuntalan mong lugar? At di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balo ni Ngeni, panahon na ini, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa ngayon eh, 
at katangkula ding bikers tamo edad 18 hanggang 50. Imbis na lumawot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamang heritage structures kaya ni Siudad. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamang heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Ingawan nyo mo ba ang makapag-register Punta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabila ng kaya kayong heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyakin na nano ko pa. Tara na! Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Earlier, we started discussing the steps involved in applying the principle of Boyle's Law. To check if you really understood the process, you are required to compute and provide solution to the following situations. Before we begin, Make sure to have your pen and paper with you. You may also use calculator. Are you ready, Fernandino Teens? Let us start. If a gas at 25.0 degrees Celsius occupies 3.6 liters at a pressure of 1.00 atmosphere, what will be its volume at a pressure of 2.50 atmosphere? A. 1.44 liters, B, 2.77 liters, C, 4.35 liters, D, 6.94 liters. Amazing! The answer is letter A, 1.44 liters. Temperature will always be taken as constant quantity in Boyle's law, and therefore, will not be used in the solution. Substituting the given values in the original formula, the solution will be like this. The unknown is the final volume or V2. 2.50 atmosphere is the final pressure will be divided to the product between the initial pressure, which is 1.00 atmosphere, and the initial volume, which is equal to 3.60 liters. Similar units will then be cancelled from the equation, leaving us 1.44 liters as the final answer. Let us supplement your existing knowledge on Boyle's Law by watching a simulation. Similar to the first video presented, please watch carefully because a simple test will be given after. Are you ready, Fernandino Teens? Let us watch this. Hi there, Fernandino Teens. Once again, I am Mam Rona J. Buiko. In this part of our lesson, I will present a simple experiment showing pressure volume relationship. To start, pay attention to this part of our simulation. As you can see, the initial condition of the system has both pressure and temperature set to the lowest point. Initially, let us pump gas into our container once. Doing this, you will notice that temperature has changed. Before we start observing the relationship between pressure and volume, it is important to hold temperature as a constant factor in the experiment. Next, let us gradually pump gas into the container. Mm -hmm. 
after doing this, what can you notice on the reading of the pressure? Correct, Fernandino Dins. As we slowly pump gas, the pressure within the container starts to increase. Now that the container is filled with gas, I would like you to take note of the final reading of pressure, which is 34.9 atmosphere. This time, let us try to increase the volume of the container by expanding it. Now that we have expanded our container and increased its volume, what is the new reading of the pressure? Correct, Fernandino Tins. From 39.4 atmosphere, the pressure decreased to 27.2 atmosphere. Let us try one more time and expand the container. At this point, the pressure decreased to 23.3 atmosphere. What do you think will happen to pressure if we continue expanding or increasing the volume of the container? Great. Increasing the volume will further decrease or lower the pressure inside the container. Before we proceed, to the next part of our experiment, I would like you to answer this question. How can we decrease the amount of pressure without increasing the inherent volume of the container? Correct. As you can see, opening the container makes the gas particles to escape from the system, thus lowering pressure. Lastly, let us try to compress or decrease the volume of the container. What do you think will happen to the pressure inside? That is a nice conclusion, Fernandino Tins. To prove this, let us once again manipulate the simulation. Observe what happens to pressure as we compress or decrease the volume of the container. Apparently, your answer is correct. Pressure will increase when the container has been compressed or when its volume has been decreased. Hopefully, you learn a lot from this experiment. Until next time, Fernandino Tins. The video that you have seen gave you a clear understanding of pressure-volume relationship. As mentioned earlier, an assessment or test will be given afterwards. As for the instruction, answer true if the statement is correct and false if otherwise. Are you ready, Fernandino Teens? Let us begin. Number one. Temperature played an important role in the recently performed experiment on Boyle's Law. Correct. The answer is false. In Boyle's Law, temperature is always taken as constant value. Therefore, it is supposed to be neglected during computations or experimentations. Number two. Increasing the size of the container made the internal pressure to decrease. Amazing, Fernandino Tins. The correct answer is true. Based from the experiment, expansion of the container size lead to a decrease in internal pressure. Number three, a direct proportionality relationship exists between pressure and volume in Boyle's law. Nicely done. The correct answer is false. As discussed previously, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Were you able to get perfect score? Very good. 
Pressure and volume relationship can also be described in graphical form. At the same time, this representation puts emphasis on the connection between these two factors through numerical data. In this way, we will be able to see clearly on how one quantity varies depending on the changes made on the other quantity. In order to create a graph, we must first organize the data in tabular form. Let us consider this situation. Rico is a grade 10 student at a nearby high school. He usually wakes up early before sunrise to do his morning routine. Before he works on his module at around 7 a.m., he picks up his bike and cycle within the neighborhood. However, upon waking up this morning, he found out that the front tire of his bicycle is flat. Fortunately, his father was able to buy an air pump the other day. Being a bike enthusiast and an aspiring cyclist in the future, he studied many things about bicycles, including the physics behind tires. Starting to inflate the flat tire with air, Rico was able to compute for the periodic changes in the tire's volume and records the following. 18 centimeters cube, 22 centimeters cube, 30 centimeters cube, 45 centimeters cube, and 90 centimeters cube. While doing this, he was also able to notice the pressure from the air gauge attached to the pump as follows. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 atmosphere. Were you able to take note of the data presented in the example? Great! After learning about the situation presented, we are now ready to arrange the data in a table. This table shows the data from the example presented earlier. As you can see, numerical values described in centimeters cube were written on the volume side of the table, and figures described in atmosphere were written on the pressure side of the table. After organizing the table, we are now ready to plot this data in graph. To do this, we must draw a Cartesian plane and write the quantities in its side of the axis. In this graph, you can see that volume is written on the x-axis since it is the independent variable. On the other hand, pressure is written on the y-axis because it is the dependent variable. After writing the figures on the appropriate side, it is now time to pair up the data from the table and draw the points. The first point in the graph was drawn from the pair of 18 centimeter cube and 5 atmosphere. The second point was taken from the pair of 22 centimeters cube and 4 atmosphere. On the other hand, 30 centimeters cube and 3 atmosphere created the third point. The fourth pair of 45 centimeters cube and two atmosphere made the second to the last point. Finally, the fifth point was taken from the pair of 90 centimeters cube and one atmosphere. The graph made it easy for us to understand the inverse relationship between volume and pressure. That is, when volume decreases, pressure increases, and vice versa. By this time, you are already familiar on how to solve problems involving Boyle's Law. At the same time, you learn to organize and describe data in tabular and graphical forms. Prepare your pen and pencil because when we return, we will test your understanding of the concept that we have just taken. I will also share with you many instances on how Boyle's Law or pressure-volume relationship is involved in our daily living. Do not change the channel, and we will be back after a short while. Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng Siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST. 
isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagtabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Paano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay ia-add ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, 
magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. This picture shows that during respiration, our lungs makes use of Boyle's Law. While inhaling, the lungs are filled with air. Therefore, they expand. The volume increases, hence the pressure level goes down. Similarly, when the lungs are emptied of air, they shrink. Therefore, the volume reduces and pressure increases. Let us test your understanding of Boyle's Law. Answer true if the statement is true and false if otherwise. Number 1. An inverse relationship exists between pressure and volume. Great! The answer is true. As stated earlier, Pressure varies depending on the changes made on volume. That is, when volume increases or decreases, the opposite happens to pressure. Number two, expansion of balloon when subjected to high temperatures is an example of Boyle's Law. Nice job, Fernandino Tins. The correct answer is false. It was discussed previously that Boyle's Law only involves pressure and volume and takes temperature as a constant variable. You are truly remarkable, Fernandino Tins. Before we end this episode, let me leave you with this famous line from Sarah Johnson and I quote, Pressure isn't supposed to break us. It's designed to make us. No matter how difficult life can be, we must remain resilient. Let us make failures and pressure as opportunities to grow. After all, diamonds are created due to tremendous heat and pressure underground. These are the references for today's lesson. Again, this is Mam Rona J. Buiko saying, It's always cool to be smart. Stay healthy and see you soon. Hayan Dino, maayos na naipaliwanag ni Ma'am Rona kung ano ang Boyle's Law. Oo nga, yung mga experiments ay nakatulong ng husto upang maintindihan natin ito. Tama, natutuhan din natin ang iba't ibang paraan kung papaano nagagamit ang konsepto ng Boyle's Law sa ating pamumuhay. Kaya naman, maraming, maraming salamat, salamat ma'am! Ma Isa na namang makabulohang talakayan ang ating natong hayan, Fernandino Teams. Magkita-kita tayong muli sa susunod na episode ng Fernandino Teams! TV Season 2 Kung saan ang kabataang Fernandino ay anak sa King Talino. Maging mapanuri, sundin ng wasto 